Hi, my name is Chandra, and today I am making focaccia bread. My husband is cleaning the chimney, so I think I edited out all of the startled looks I make when there are loud sounds of ash falling down the chimney, but we'll see if we find any more of those in here. So far I've added some of my sourdough starter. Uh, mine is usually, right now, spelt, and sometimes einkorn, but this one is spelt, and some water, and some olive oil. I'm gonna get that good and mixed up and then add some dry ingredients. This recipe is from the company Jovial's book, Einkorn, and I will link it below. It's a great book. I've liked everything I've used from it. So here is my all-purpose Einkorn flour. This is also the Jovial brand, uh, and their brand really does make good flour. Um, and here's some salt coming in as well, and I'll mix that together in the top a little bit before I mix into the wet ingredients. Um, but what I was saying is I have bought einkorn flour from other sources before and it wasn't as good. I ended up using that flour mostly to feed my starter. Um, it wasn't, it was more of a high extraction flour than an all-purpose flour. So I had tried to go a little cheaper and sometimes the money is worth it. I buy Jovial all the time now if I want an all-purpose einkorn. Going to feed my starter and this is how I do it. Add some water, just about two or three inches in the bottom and shake it up real good to get all the stuff off the sides. I really try not to leave very much starter in there because it makes for a healthier starter if it gets a really good feeding with just a little bit of the old stuff and lots of new. Then I add flour until I get it really thick because a thick starter will last longer. It does not ferment as quickly so I can stick this in the refrigerator at the end of the day, after this has been able to get nice and bubbly, I'll put it in the refrigerator and it will stay um, good, if even, even if I don't end up baking for a week. And you can see I can dump it upside down and it does not come out. So if you're working hard to stir it up, you're making a starter as thick as I am. I am taking a couple loaves of bread that I made out of the oven. This bread was overproofed, so it fermented for too long. It doesn't mean that it will taste bad, it'll be maybe on the more sour side, but it does not rise as high. I'm also taking the temperature because I try to bake them as little as possible so the crust stays as soft as possible. So as long as it hits 200, it's done. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting to note that a good use of an overproofed dough is actually to make it into focaccia. If I had taken those and added a bunch of oil onto the bottom of a pan, spread them out, added a bunch of oil and water and salt onto the top, they would have made a nice focaccia. So obviously I didn't need that much focaccia, but it's a good thing to know, to have in your back pocket. If you have some overproofed dough lying around, you could make a really nice focaccia out of it. You've seen me do this once already and I will do it again, so a total of three times. This is the, the stretch and fold method described in this Einkorn cookbook. I love this. This is the best part, I think, of this recipe. This is a mixture of water and olive oil and salt, and it's going to get dumped over the top of this focaccia dough when I'm done forming it. And I think this is a really nice touch. I've made focaccia before, but I, I didn't do this. I don't know if the recipe I was using didn't specify it, or I don't know what, but it it is good. Another thing I noticed that I really liked about using einkorn 
is that einkorn has a pretty low gluten content and it's a different form of gluten. So it's not what you're used to, but also it's not as springy. So as I'm stretching the dough out, it's not trying to spring back because the gluten isn't as strong. So it just is really easy to work with in this scenario. to top mine with cherry tomatoes because I have a lot of them and I thought maybe the kids would eat this if there weren't onions or herbs on it but that's funny because they definitely did not. Nora will try a bread item but she definitely picked off the tomatoes first. Leo doesn't really like bread so tomatoes or no tomatoes he's not gonna eat it. forgot to show you the bottom. It was so beautifully oily and crispy. Really good. I'll make this again.